St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Methuen, Massachusetts, whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey of faith, we're glad you're with us this morning. Our worship today is the Holy Eucharist Rite 1, and it begins in your Book of Common Prayer on page 323, or you may follow along with the insert. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love Thee and worthily magnify Thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that He may live in us and we in Him who liveth and reigneth with Thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and so many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it upon a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person will look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read Psalm 107, or read responsively, breaking out the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his his mercy mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he he redeemed them them from the hand of the foe. He has gathered them out of the lands, from from the the east and from from the west, west, from from the the north and from the the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They They were were afflicted afflicted because because of their sins. sins. They abhorred all manner of food and and drew near to death's death's door. door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he he delivered them them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and and saved saved them from from the grave. grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the the wonders wonders he does for his his children. children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And tell of his acts with the shouts of joy. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the rule of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which, with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive again with Christ. By the grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not only your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory be to, to thee, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Those who believe in Him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Christ. Creator, Christ, and Spirit. Amen. So I know I've told you before of the Sunday morning that I pretended to be sick so I didn't have to go to church and I could stay home and put together a crystal radio set that my parents had given me the day before. I think it was for my 11th or 12th birthday. So my parents, my brothers, my sister, all went off to church and I opened the box and I took the thing out and I wound the little copper wire and I hooked up the little crystal and finally I put it on the battery and lo and behold, there was music. It was wonderful. I find this a helpful metaphor for how the Bible understands the spiritual life. St. Paul today says that human beings are we're like radios with no connection to any power, either from the wall or from an internal battery, and therefore we're unable to pick up the God waves that are floating all around us. He says we're unable to pick up God because we're disconnected from the power necessary to turn us on, wake us up, make us work. May look great, but nothing happens. He says, and he uses harsh words, doesn't he? He says, in our natural state, human beings are dead. Dead to God's broadcast. The, uh, theologian, uh, brilliant theologian of the 20th century, Karl Barth, says we're, we're like Lazarus, four days dead in the grave. That's how dead we are. We're incapable of even hearing or seeing. Therefore, if we're ever to play the beautiful music we were created to play, we must receive the power to turn us on, to wake us up, to make us work. And since this power doesn't belong to us, it doesn't reside in us, we can only be turned on, Paul says, by grace. By grace. And our readings today, I hope you read, Matt did a great job of reading those. They're, each of their lessons gives us a different image to describe grace. That which turns us on to God who is all around us. 
In numbers, grace looks like you've got a bunch of sick people dying in the field, but they just look up and they see Moses holding this pole with his snake around it. Remind you of the symbols of the medical profession. And just looking up, the power of God would come from that pole into them and make them well. In Ephesians, Paul says grace makes looks like people dead in their trespasses and sins receiving that life-giving power from God through the pure gift of Jesus Christ. So that Paul would say, quote, but God who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with Christ. And then in the gospel, the gospel of John we just heard, Jesus says grace is Christ lifted up on the cross. So from Christ comes the power to make us alive to God. So each of these images is telling us that being connected to God, which is another way to describe salvation, is not self-generated. No matter how hard we try, it's not self-generated. That power to connect us to God is God-generated. And this is as true, not just as the beginning, the first time we ever believe, but every moment along our spiritual journey, it is true. So Paul says we can never boast about our life in God because it always comes through grace. The person who goes to church every week and faithfully serves the Lord is in need of this grace every bit as much as a person who spends their days hurting others so that they can be a success. So here's the thing. Being a good person who lives a moral life does not have the power to connect us to God. It reminds me of a story that you all know. He was such a good boy. He did everything his parents asked of him. He worked hard in school. He was faithful in going to church. He would memorize the scriptures his Sunday school teachers would give him. He obeyed all the rules for holy living. And he grew up to be a productive, faithful young man. He walked that straight and narrow and was an example to his peers. But now, some years later, he's in prison. And in a year, he will be on death row for disobeying the police, causing riots, and seducing others to join him in a New Age cult. His family is absolutely heartbroken. His clergy are deeply distressed. And so we ask, what in the world happened to Saul of Tarsus, who we know as the Apostle Paul, for this is his story. He's writing to the church in Ephesus today from his prison cell. And he says what happened to him was grace. And that grace was not only unearned, it was unexpected. In fact, he didn't even pray for it. In fact, he did not even want it. His life was going great. He was living the dream. He was a rising star. And we all know the story. He tells it, I guess, three times in the book of Acts and once in Galatians when the risen Christ appears to him on the road to Damascus, everything changes. But too often we miss, I think, the inner meaning or the inner feeling of that encounter. I know people, when we talk about our spiritual life, if you're from an evangelical church, you may say, well, I made... You know, my conversion was I made Jesus my Lord and Savior. Or if you're from maybe a more fundamentalist church, you might say, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Or if you're from an 
Anglican church, liturgical church, we would say, I've been baptized. And all of those things happen to Paul as a result of that encounter with Christ. But what plugs him into God and overturns his life? What is Christ doing to him in that encounter? Here's one way of saying it. Paul is seized by the power of a great affection. Paul is seized by the power of a great affection. I first heard that phrase. I know I've used it before. I heard it first from a former Roman Catholic priest, a recovering addict and prolific writer, Christian writer, Brennan Manning. I highly recommend his work. And he describes his experience of grace as being seized by the power of a great affection. The current that flows into Paul waking him up isn't electricity, but divine love. You know, we, like Paul, are raised, and have been raised, to conform. To conform to the norms and values of our parents, and society, to conform to the laws of our nation and the beliefs of our church. We conform so we will not be condemned. But here's the thing. Conforming may earn us the respect and admiration of others, but it does not connect us to God. Only being seized by that power of great affection does that. So the good news of this and every day is, from the gospel, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. Let me read that again. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. All those inner voices of self-condemnation are coming from ourselves. They're not coming from God. But rather, God, he says, sends the Son because God so loved the world. God so loved the world. God so loved you and me. So to be the people of faith who play the music of God, we must grow beyond conforming to the world or conforming to the church or conforming to the society we must be transformed. And we can't transform ourselves. We are saved by grace. But what we can do every day is to take a few minutes and maybe take a few deep breaths and to look on Christ through our imagination to remind ourselves that even in our failures we are not condemned because we have been seized by the power of a great affection. One prayer I try to say during the day that helps me, maybe it could help you, or write your own. It is this, Holy Spirit, river of love flowing through me, my source and my salvation, my peace and my purpose. Amen. We will now recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and eschatolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplication and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially in the diocesan cycle of prayer, the parishes of the Cape and Islands Deanery, the Church of the Good Shepherd in Wareham, St. James the Fisherman Church in Walfield, the Church of the Messiah, Woods Hole in Falmouth, the Diocesan Congregational Consultants, and for all churches in the diocese, closed or merged. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, the Galatia Anglica de Chile, and our friends at St. John's Nahumbi in Tanzania. In the local cycle of prayer, we pray for the Fellowship Bible Church in Methuen, Massachusetts, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to the congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may bear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph our president, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor. We pray for those in our parish prayer list, Tony Montecavo, Anne Duffy, Chris and Doreen Hitchens, Christopher Duby, Jack and family, Sean Brudre, Edison Mandy, James Segalo from New Humby, along with the entire village, which has recently been impacted by COVID with little medical care available to them. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we may also bless thy holy name to all thy servants departed this life by their faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continued growth in their thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Andrew and all thy saints, so that we may be partakers in thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling in body or spirit. 
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Word of God to all who truly turn to God. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is the perfect offering for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. God's peace. God's peace. Again, Welcome on this chilly morning. Nature was just playing with us this week when they had that 70 degree weather. Uh, but the sun is out, shining brightly through our back window here. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, there will not be the hymn study today. I think Krista's a little under the weather, so we will not be having that this, uh, this today. And uh, in your email you saw that, of course, normally we'd be getting ready for the St. Patrick's Day dinner uh, to raise money for the Arlington Neighborhood Food Pantry. And if you have it within your means to still send a check in for that, that would be much appreciated. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
great thanksgiving may be found on page 333. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by thy word and sacraments they may come to the fullness of grace which Thou hast prepared for those who love Thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in His Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until His coming again. For in the night in which He was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of Thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we Thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before Thy divine majesty with these Thy holy gifts which we now offer unto Thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, 
We and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto Thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <clears throat> the sacrament of Holy Communion does not arise out of any lack of devotion to you, but out of the love that you have commanded that we have for one another. 
Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to unite myself to you spiritually, together with all your faithful people, and that I might embrace you with all the affections of my soul. In this time of trial, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious presence of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God, all-loving, almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.